Balanced nutrition forms an integral part of any structured training program, but can the manipulation of nutrition alone have an effective impact on your training? Well, to answer that very question, we're going to speak to James Morton, Head of Nutrition at Team Sky, here at the Giro d'Italia. So James, in your role as Head Nutritionist at Team Sky, how do you use diet in combination with, uh, with the coaches and training so riders can actually lose weight? Because it is one of the holy grails of cycling, isn't it? It's the power to weight ratio, so being as light as they can, but while still maintaining that optimum power. So, so ha ha what techniques? Well, I, I think it's the $64 million question of cycling, really. Um, it, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be as complicated as what people think. I mean, the, the, ultimately it comes back to energy balance. So if people want to lose weight, they have to expend more energy than they actually consume. Well, the difficulty of it is, of course, is that these guys are training for six months for the, the peak event of the season. So it has to be done at the right times and you, and you can't lose weight too quickly, too soon, otherwise you burn out. So it's, it's more of a gradual approach really. Um, we try and do it over the, a six month period. We identify the types of weight loss targets that we want in certain phases of the season. But of course the, the initial conversation involves the coach and the rider and we have to plan out the correct times in the season when we're, or the correct days in the week actually, down to that level of where we're training hard or days when the intensity isn't as high and you can maybe afford a calorie deficit on those days. So I guess it's very much a meal by meal, day by day approach. And we do that every week. And we're in constant dialogue every week to try and make sure that we're fueling well for the days that we need to fuel well. And I guess you could call it deliberately under fueling on the days that you can not deliberately under fuel. And over the course of a seven day period, you build up a calorie deficit. Every month you're building up your calorie deficit and then slowly but surely you chip away at it and hopefully you arrive on day one of your peak race in the best shape of the season. How often, I mean, I'm intrigued, how often will a rider weigh themselves? Is this, I mean, at home? I mean, I know on a Grand Tour because of dehydration and stuff, riders are weighed every day because it's important to maintain, obviously, a balance, especially from a hydration perspective, not losing too much weight. But say you've identified a rider arbitrarily needs to lose two, two kilograms. Would that rider be required to be weighed every day or would it be every couple of days? How would you manage that, that sort of thing? Yeah, it, again, it's very individual specific. Um, I mean, it, these guys aren't robots, you know, yeah. they're, they're human beings as well. And you've got to treat them like human beings, they're not robots. So it, it all really comes back to those intense periods of the season when we want to do that. And in, in an intense period, which might be five, six, seven, eight weeks, it's not uncommon for riders to weigh themselves every morning and every night. Um, and in fact, we would encourage that. The more times they do it, then the more that we learn how they're responding to the different interventions. But more importantly, the more that they learn. And once they learn and they take ownership for it themselves, then that's real progress, really. I mean, typically in terms of the actual diet itself, I guess you're keeping, I mean, in terms of like proteins and carbohydrates, do you increase proteins, decrease carbohydrates? I mean, what kind of permutation do you use? Or is it, or, I mean, what's the science behind the best way to kind of lose weight? Because there's so much conjecture over this particular subject. Yeah, well, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the head there. We've been debating this for 20 years and, and longer, actually. It was certainly in my career yeah. for 20 years or so, but sports scientists have been debating this for many decades. I think the research in 2017 is pointing towards a, a higher protein diet and perhaps a, a carbohydrate restricted diet or in fact a carbohydrate periodized diet. So we would say consistently high protein every day. You yep. never compromise on the protein. Um, but what you do manipulate is energy balance. And the way that you manipulate energy balance is to manipulate the carbohydrate intake. And so what, what it really looks like then is that some days you will fuel well with high carbohydrate for those intensity type days. And other days you will under fuel for those perhaps longer duration but lower intensity days and that's where you would restrict the carbohydrate but the protein always stays the same and, and I think most sports scientists nowadays would agree the benefits of a high protein diet on weight loss so we'd use a lot of the science and sport the, the whey protein supplements uh, the advanced isolate protein which we have on the bike um, the overnight protein which we have prior to sleep we've got the, the whey 20 product which is effectively um, almost like a protein gel sure. we'd use that on the bike quite a lot 
So I guess when, when we look at a rider and they might need to hit maybe 180 grams of protein per day, of course we will try and emphasize that in food, but purely on convenience and also quality, because a lot of these protein products are rich in real key amino acids. Sure. Then we will top up the daily protein intake with the SIS products. Um, and, and all of the riders buy into that. I mean, they really like those products and more importantly, they see the benefits from them. Now, final question. If many of our viewers who watch, watch these videos, you know, are trying to lose weight. It, it is, it's always, will, it always has been, always will be, you know, a big topic in cycling, losing a little bit of weight, getting that bit more efficient on the bike. So what are two pieces of key advice for somebody watching this for them to lose weight safely and effectively? I think I would aim for a slow and gradual weight loss. So certainly no more than one kilo per week. Okay. Um, it, you can lose weight much quicker than that. Yeah but that's usually where trouble starts to happen. So I would say slow and gradual. Um, but I, in my mind and in my experience of research and practice, the nutritional strategy that facilitates that is higher protein than what the general population are used to consuming okay. and certainly less carbohydrate than what they're used to consuming. But make sure that when you have those key training sessions, you consume the carbohydrate and make sure when it's race day itself, then obviously you consume it. And I guess the principle that really brings it all together is this concept of fuel for the work required. In other words, if you have a long, hard day in the saddle, then fuel for it. And if you don't have a long, hard day in the saddle, then don't fuel for it. Okay, James Morton, thanks very much. Some top tips there, thank you. Well, some really interesting, intriguing points there that I know are gonna light up the comment section. And if you wanna get involved, leave your comments down below. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to GCN, you can do so by clicking on the globe somewhere on the screen here. It's absolutely free, and that way you won't miss another GCN video. Now, for some more nutrition videos, how about clicking just up here for how many calories you burn through cycling, and click just down here for Team Sky's secret nutrition tips. And don't forget to like and share this video too.